I want you to give me, give an assessment of where we are in this battle about the future of energy. Uh, you've obviously had a huge impact, but the world seems to still be going against, yeah. uh, against us. Um, there is an energy crisis right now, and, and people are making a lot of really bad decisions. Our, our leaders are making a lot of really bad decisions. But as you said, it's an opportunity because people are thinking about these things. Uh, so give us an assessment of where we are and also how much of an impact you've had on intellectuals versus business people versus maybe policy people. Right, so I think, I think of it as there are three big variables right now. So you can think of it as the overwhelming anti-fossil fuel movement, uh, the growing energy humanist movement, and then the current energy crisis. And so the overwhelming anti-fossil fuel movement, I think people are pretty aware of that, but basically you can think of it as the number one moral goal in the world today is rapidly eliminating fossil fuels. And, and as evidenced by corporations say we're going net zero, which basically means rapidly eliminating fossil fuels, governments have all signed on to it. You know, if you want status, just be anti-fossil fuels. Now, I should say it's starting to change because of an energy crisis, but we'll get to that one in a second. So that's, you know, a very bad sign. And, and that's that's been getting worse in, in many ways since moral case uh, came out. The, 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 the second thing, which is very promising, is what I'd call the, the burgeoning energy humanist movement. And so by energy humanist, I mean somebody who is thinking about energy and its impacts, a positive and negative, um, in a pro-human big picture way. So I would put in that category, me, uh, Steve Coonan, Michael Schellenberger, Bjorn Lomborg, Matt Ridley, uh, Robert Bryce, and there are you know, more and more coming up. And you know, what, what's been really interesting about that is that we, we've really kind of, st we've started to destroy this false alternative of either you believe that fossil fuels impact climate and you're against fossil fuels, or you don't believe they impact climate and so fossil fuels are okay. Like this false, you're either a believer or a denier in climate change, and that determines your position on fossil fuels. Like we've, we've really changed it to, no, you have to look at the big picture, the full context. It's very possible that we could be impacting climate that A, some of that could be good, but in any case, B, that any negatives of that were far outweighed by the benefits of fossil fuels, including their ab amazing ability to protect us from climate by using machines to make it hot when we, to make it warm when we need it and cool when we need it and irrigate and et cetera, et cetera. So that, what's interesting about that is we've gotten, you know, there've been many best-selling books in that school of thought. The Wall Street Journal, for example, has really picked that school of thought up. I mean, they had at one point like 11 things by Lomborg in a row uh, in the lead to the COP26 climate thing uh, last year. So, and of course we have somebody in energy humanist who's running for governor of California, who's been featured widely and who's not apologetic uh, about that at all. He's not apologetic even about his association with me, which I've told him like, feel free to not. It's, but he's like, no, he just says what he thinks, which I really admire. That's uh, fantastic. And he's coming on the podcast on Monday, actually on my oh, podcast uh, to talk about stuff. So, so that's good. Now there's the danger though, when you're part of a movement that's burgeoning that you can kind of overstate how significant it is because it's still like being swamped in a certain way. And the third thing, but but the most, maybe the most heartening thing to me is that the other side doesn't really have any answer to us. So they've resorted to a lot of smears. They they've they do a lot of straw manning. So they did this to Kunin, they did this to Schellenberger, Washington Post tried to portray me as a racist. That was their answer to fossil future. So yeah. it's like, they, they, but they don't really do, they're not doing well. They haven't changed their arguments. They keep just saying like, oh, you're a climate change denier or now you're a racist, but they're, they're really losing. And I think people are starting to see that. I mean, you saw, for instance, uh, Kunin was on Joe Rogan, which I think is a big kind of cultural sign. So the energy crisis is then, so I was already optimistic that we could make a lot of progress even before the crisis. And in part, I knew one was coming at some point. I talk about it at the end of the book. Uh, but now there's a, a heightened awareness that it is that that today there's something very wrong with today's policies because people are paying higher gasoline prices. They're seeing more blackouts and they know that this is related to politicians who have been restricting fossil fuel investment production and transportation and who have been telling them, oh, we don't need fossil fuels. We're in an energy transition. So you see like at gas stations, the, the Joe Biden, like I did that stickers pointing, yeah. you know, it's an arrow pointing to the price. So you've got openness. This doesn't at all guarantee that the right narrative will take over, uh, but it gives an opportunity and it particularly gives an opportunity if those of us who have been right 
take credit for being right mm -hmm. and criticize the others for being wrong. So you, you remember when 9-11 happened, like people like Daniel Pipes who had said things about, hey, we need to be worried about this threat, they rose in credibility. Or look at what happened to Peter Schiff with the financial crisis because he had that highlight reel of things that he said, which is not to say he's been right about everything since, uh, but he had that highlight reel like on Art Laffer's show and stuff. And he just skyrocketed to prominence because it's like he predicted this crisis. And so one thing I'm very deliberately doing and unapologetically is I'm looking at my track record. Like for example, I testified in front of Congress warning about all of this in 2016 in front mm -hmm. of the Senate. And I was ridiculed as I don't wanna be lectured by a philosopher. And I said, you have to look at the big picture. You have to look at the benefits of fossil fuels and Barbara Boxer didn't and look at, look at where we are. So we have to really take credit for having been right about this. And then, and then really clearly put forward an alternative view. And so that's why I'm very happy to have a book coming out that that's a total energy re-education uh, right at this moment when people are open to it. So that's, that's why you don't know what's going to happen, but you don't want to be pessimistic if you see something growing and you see an opportunity. And I should also say with, with the groups you mentioned, in the last couple of years, I've been quite influential on in politicians. I now work with over 100 elected officials okay. offices. Uh, and you're starting to see more of them talk well. And right now I'm working on an energy freedom platform, which I think will be the next level of influence. But mm -hmm. already I'm consulted again by dozens of different offices. I meet with people all the time. Uh, with, you know, with industry, I've definitely had a large influence. You're seeing CEOs speaking out more and more, which never, you know, at the beginning, we never, this never happened when we would talk about this 20 years ago or whenever I got started on this. And, um, you know, the intellectual world, I would say is a mixed bag. Uh, some of the, a lot of the free market energy people have definitely been influenced uh, and I get a lot of support from them. Uh, but one of the, the, my real focus in fossil future is really breaking through to as many kind of influencers, whether in energy or outside, by just giving a totally airtight case. But the moral case was great, but it wasn't super comprehensive. It wasn't nearly as step-by-step -step airtight. And I mean, I'm dying to see what just people on the fence think of this. Like, I'm so curious what their answer is going to be because it's, it's like, I spent three years trying to refute it. It's by this time, it's really hard. So Do I'm you so see curious. intellectuals out there on this issue being on the fence? Are there intellectuals on the fence on this issue? Well, yes. And, and I guess I should say influencers. So intellectuals, yeah. if it, is it, you know, my professors at Duke university, may, maybe some of them. But uh, no, not so much, but I'm thinking even more of the, even if you just take the kind of middle slash open to the right people like Joe Rogan, mm -hmm. Barry Weiss, uh, you know, someone like Steven Pinker is really interesting. Yep. I think he, yep. he cites moral case in his first book. I don't know if he's read the whole thing, but I would love him to read this. You yes. know, even Sam Harris is, that's a really interesting one because he has had a lot of antagonism toward fossil fuels, but I think he, so those people matter it, 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 more Musk. than they used to. Yeah, he's, uh, he hasn't unblocked me from Twitter yet. So we're uh, baby steps. He is praised in the book and criticized in the, in the book. So uh, I, I'm not going to bet anything for, in his case. But, you well, know, I think, I, I think it's, there's, there's more of a blend than there used to be between influential people intellectually in the culture and then in academia. So for me, it's just there are hundreds of kind of smart people out there who, who are very influential that I think would be open to this. And I'm very curious to see how they react. I've gotten some initial good signs, but I want to see, like, does this take off? Do people start talking about knowledge system, mm -hmm. designated experts, ignoring benefits, catastrophizing side effects, climate mastery, like climate mastery denial, uh, all of these things? I think there's a good chance. Cool. So um, let's see. So first, I want to remind everybody about buying the book. Uh, we got a bunch of new, um, new people joining. So don't forget to buy the book. You can buy it on Amazon or pretty much any bookstore out there. Um, you know, it's it's great in order to get on the bestseller list. We want a lot of individual orders. So uh, go out there and buy a book for yourself, buy books for your friends. Uh, use Amazon, use Barnes & Noble, use other websites. Uh, you know, buy as many books as you can. Uh, and the key is to buy it this week, really. Uh, the sooner, the better. Uh, yeah, before, before, basically before the end of next weekend. Like by yes. next Saturday. Yeah. So over the next seven days, six days, buy the book. And uh, it's uh, it, it it's available on May 24th. But if you go today and buy it, that counts. Uh, if you buy it a few days after it becomes available, that counts still. But it really is that first few days that are the key to getting on the bestseller list. So go out and, and, and buy the book now. 
if everybody who listens just to my show buys the book, you know, it'll have a little dent, not, it won't be huge, but it'll, it'll uh, significant, it'll, it'll help. It'll bring some more. I think if everyone who listens to your show bought the book, certainly if everyone bought two, uh, it would go on the New York Times bestseller list based on how many it sold already. I think that's right. And, and knowing that the numbers for the New York Times bestseller list are not that huge as one, it's not millions, right? It doesn't take millions to get on the, on the New York Times bestseller list. It takes, Tens of thousands and, and tens of thousands we should be able to do quite easily. So uh, so uh, so do it. Buy a couple of books. Uh, I've, I've already bought the Kindle. Uh, I don't know if the Kindle counts. Does Kindle count? Yes. Yeah, it does. All For right. New York Times, I believe it does. On, yep. um, audio. And audio and I need, I need audio? to send you a signed real cup. I believe Audible does. I don't know exactly, but... Okay. Um, so I might buy... Yeah. I'm probably going to buy it in Audible too because I'll probably, uh, I'll probably uh, do my... I read it quickly, I guess, months ago when I wrote the blog. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, but, it, but I, it would be good. It'd be good to listen to it on one of my walks. And, and I recorded, the, I should say, I recorded, uh, oh, you it did? took me a long time. I recorded that thing for, wow. it, yeah, for various reasons. I, it took longer than I thought, but it, it's 16 hours and it took me 35 hours to record. So uh, oh, I would have I did, more I, than I, 35 I, hours. So that's oh, pretty good. Oh my gosh. Well, good. I would have, um, uh, yeah, I would highly, I would just say I put a lot into recording this thing okay. because no, everyone really wants the authors to. I'm, it's not some Shakespearean thing. My voice I, want, do I, Al, do I want Alex's voice in my ear for, 30, for, for 16 hours. So, that's yeah, that's that's what that's it is. It's, it's that people don't because imagine, I mean, you know me well, yeah. like just listening to my book and someone else's voice, even if it's an amazing voice. Yeah. is a little bit weird. So I, I it's not my favorite thing at all to read things out loud precisely but I did it because people value it. So I hope a lot of people enjoy the audible. Book. Good. All right. We're going to jump into the um, super chat because there were a lot of questions. Uh, some of them are comments, some of them are questions, almost all of them related to what we're talking about. Some are not, but we'll let Alex decide if he wants to answer them. No, they're all good. They're all positive. Um, so this, this is from Jeff. It, it's 200 plus Canadian dollars. So I'll read it. I, I'm going to read it. We are, we're not yet in the dystopia of Anthem. Uh, but it seems that they have us on a backward trend towards candles and barely being able to care for ourselves. Thanks for keeping up the fight. So it's more thank you uh, than anything else. So uh, thank you, Alex. Uh, you're, you're welcome. Maybe, maybe this is a time to highlight another positive development I'm seeing that didn't wasn't existing when Moral Case came out was just more and more people from the poor parts of the world standing up for themselves. I was just yeah. talking to a guy uh, right before this who's kind of an agricultural engineer from Kenya, and he's, go, he's trying to get his education in the UK. And he was a Greenpeace activist. And now he's a huge champion of fossil fuels. Like, great, think about that. They co-opted people in poor countries even. Wow. And it's like, but you're seeing more and more people. I met a guy at a conference recently from South Sudan, and he's like really influenced by my Google talk. And really, so That's it's great. exciting to see. And, and the cool thing is, this is, is almost accelerating because there's yeah. not much opposition. And the, the more people who talk about these things, the easier it is and the harder it is to just be dismissed as a climate denier. Yeah. And in, in my, my view, it, in a sense, it's much easier for them to, to accept us in poor countries because it's a life or death issue for them. Yeah. It's a life or death issue for us as well, but it doesn't seem like a life. Like it's not, a, it's not, it's not imminent. It's not concrete enough in, for them. It's imminent. It's concrete. They know exactly what's at stake. They're still poor. They know what poverty looks like. They know what death is uh, in, in, a, in a kind of a sense that I don't think we realize in the West. And so I think this should take off in places like Africa. Uh, I certainly hope so. And, and it makes me optimistic about the potential for Africa. Thank you for listening or watching the Iran Brooks show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to yourownbookshow.com slash support. By going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one of those uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Your Own Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content and of course subscribe press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for those of you who are already subscribers and those of you who are already supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.